My name is Bo Hawkinson, and I'm going to present for you our study about the mechanical impedance of the human skull via direct bone conduction implants. The mechanical impedance is defined as the excitation force over response velocity. Knowledge of this impedance is important for the understanding of how a transducer in the bone anchor device interacts with the load set, which also includes the coupling compliance. In order to measure this impedance, we use an impedance head and where we use the force and acceleration signals to calculate the magnitude and phase. We have done a multi-center study of 45 Baja patients. Here you can see the magnitude and phase results, which are analyzed in three different frequency regions, depending on the phase response. Most importantly, we have an anti-resonance or magnitude peak at 150 Hertz. Below this frequency, the impedance is determined by the skull mass and above it is determined by the skull bone compliance. We found no difference by gender just a slight stiffening by age. This impedance can be summarized in three figures and may be using an exercise blade. First, below the anti-resonance, the skull moves as a rigid body. Secondly, at the anti-resonance, we have a maximum impedance magnitude and there is hardly no motion in, in the attachment point. Third, Above the anti-resonance, only the attachment area is moving. Here you see the blade moving as a rigid body, slightly increasing frequency, and here we have the anti-resonance, hardly no motion in the handle, and then increasing again, then we have all the motions in the handle. What does these results mean in the clinical practice? Well, we need an electromechanical model of the skull impedance, which you can see to the left. To the right, you can see that our proposed model fits the measured magnitude quite well. We also need a model of the transducer to connect to the patient model. Here we can give both the skull bone compliance and the snap coupling compliance some extreme values. As you can see here, the skull bone compliance do not affect device performance up to 3 kHz. The snap coupling compliance can give some both at the higher frequencies when being softer. These devices are usually measured on a skull simulator. Then we also need a model of the skull simulator. You can see that the skull simulator moves the resonance peak approximately 50 Hertz upwards. You can also see that the second peak appears at high frequencies, but that does not exist on the patients. Thank you very much for listening.